Hello, Eddie. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me. I'm pleased to be joined by Attorney General uh, Leslie Rutledge, uh, as well as uh, Secretary Johnny Key of the Department of Education. Uh, uh, Senator uh, Missy Irvin is here, who's been active in this uh, area from a legislative standpoint, as well as uh, other legislators that are here. Uh, so thank you for uh, joining me today. And first, let me give uh, some background on this particular point. If you look back to May of 2016, uh, I received a letter, the state received a letter from the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Education. This was during the Obama administration. And they advised us that uh, our schools had to comply uh, with uh, non-discrimination in terms of gender identity and which meant that you would have to move into transgender bathrooms and have that whole host of issues. And it was guidance, and I told our school districts they did not need to follow that guidance, uh, that these are areas that uh, we've always dealt with in a very sensitive way at the local school district. And they've done well in that. And we believe that every child in Arkansas should have a good education, uh, free of discrimination, uh, but at the same time, we ought to manage these difficult issues at the local school board level. And you fast forward to the Trump administration, and they quickly uh, revoked the previous guidance and gave the school districts back the traditional authority that they had in these areas. And now the Biden administration is reversing course again, and not only expressing in terms of guidance, but have actually proposed rules that would make it clear that sexual orientation and gender identity uh, are both covered uh, under the non-discrimination laws uh, for our schools. This would interfere with Arkansas law, it would interfere with common sense, and it would interfere with local control. Specifically, uh, it would impact our ability to have, uh, to prohibit biological males from competing in girls' sports. And that is the challenge that we face. And under the new rules that by administration, uh, there would be a conflict between the law that was passed by the General Assembly that I signed into law and uh, the requirements uh, of the new rule under the Biden administration. So today I'm announcing my opposition to the proposed changes of the Biden administration uh, for the Title IX rules in education, which would violate our law that prohibits biological males from competing in women's sports. The state has expressed our opposition in two ways. First, uh, Secretary Key and our Department of Education has submitted comments in opposition to the changes. Secondly, and I applaud the Attorney General for her leadership uh, that she's filed a response with other attorney generals opposing the new rules. And as I said, the Department of Education under the Biden administration announced its intent to interpret Title IX to include gender identity and sexual orientation. This interpretation would violate state law, and of course uh, this would be the fairness in women's sports which prohibits biological males from competing in women's sports. If the new rule goes into effect, then girls' sports would be undermined, and the result is a violation of the spirit and even the letter of Title IX itself, which was designed to enhance women's sports. Schools across the nation, and especially in Arkansas, would be caught in between violating federal law and losing federal funding and facing potential fines with on the other hand, violating state law and losing state funding. We will oppose as a state these misguided amendments of this administration to ensure protection for Arkansas students and especially girls sports. And let me give you a little bit more background that Title VII, which is an employment law, employment federal law, uh, it has a definition of you cannot discriminate on the basis of sex. And the United States Supreme Court in the Bostock decision said that that 
uh, would include uh, an employee who is a homosexual or transgender and protect them from discrimination. That applied in the employment context. The Biden administration has taken the employment context and put it into the school environment and, and into all across many other environments under federal law, that, and this was never designed by Congress, and it was not designed or required by the U.S. Supreme Court decision. And so the Department of Education, the federal department, has used their broad misinterpretation to threaten states with the loss of federal funding, including funding for free and reduced lunches. These proposed amendments ignores the limitations of the Bostock case of the Supreme Court and seeks to push policies in direct conflict with laws on the books in many states. Unfortunately, these proposals are being expanded to other federal agencies as well. And so it's going across the different agencies of state government based upon federal guidance and we will be opposing each and every one of those, again, because we believe the rules are, are wrongly interpreting federal law, Congress, congressional mandates, as well as the Supreme Court decision. These proposed amendments of the Biden administration not only fly in the face of well-established law, but they fly in the face of reason and the intent of Congress. The state of Arkansas will not stand by idly while the federal government seeks to redefine federal law to the detriment of women's sports and local decision making. And with that, I'm going to invite the Attorney General uh, for her comments. Thank you so much, Governor. And what an honor it is to be here today and to discuss this important topic uh, with you all and also to announce my opposition to this federal rule regarding Title IX. Title IX was passed just 50 years ago. Think about that. 50 years ago. I was not even born, but I'm 46. And in 1994, even though Title IX was passed in 1972, ensuring that women had fairness and opportunities in sports. In 1994, as a high school senior, I wanted to play on the golf team. But we didn't have a girls golf team and the coach was quick to tell me, Leslie, you might be a good golfer, but we're not gonna start a team just because of you. I don't want my daughter or any other daughter to not have the opportunity to compete and succeed. And Title IX ensures that women, just like my daughter, have that opportunity to compete and succeed in fairness in sports. In 2022, this spring, we saw the most prolific case of this on display in the NCAA women's swimming event. And just today, the young woman who came in second, Riley Gaines, had an op-ed where she talked about losing to Leah Thomas, a biological male, and being forced to share a locker room with a biological male, being forced, she and the other female athletes, to see Leah Thomas change and that Riley Gaines could confirm that Leah Thomas was in fact a male but she lost to a male in an all-female sport. This proposed rule of the Biden administration, as the governor notes, it changes the definition and changes the definition under Title IX from biological sex to gender identity. The Biden administration is simply trying to rewrite the statute for its own purposes and undermining the many accomplishments that we have gained in access for women in athletics, as well as the free speech that's infringing upon for states and schools and colleges. It threatens federal funding. Our schools, our colleges are already in jeopardy of losing funds. Now we must decide whether or not they are going to adhere to these guidelines, this proposed rule, and lose that funding or not. I have joined with several other states in opposition of this rule. It's a violation of the Administrative Procedures Act. And as a mom, as an Arkansan, as an American, I'm going to tell you that right now this rule defies common sense. But as your Attorney General, I'm going to make sure that the courts know when the time is necessary that this rule is contrary to law. And we are stand ready and prepared to challenge this rule if it goes through. 
Thank you very much, Governor, for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, General Rutledge. And with that, we'll be happy to take any questions. And I have uh, Secretary Key here to help out as well. So we've got a letter. Um, what are the other concrete actions the state is going to take? Well, first of all, the letter is a formal uh, comment in opposition to the rule. And right now, they're going through rulemaking. And so that is the proper step. It would be our first hope that uh, the Biden administration, based upon the comments from many states, will reverse course and modify and change the rules that they're proposing. So we hope to have victory there. And that's uh, supplemented in a very vigorous fashion by the Attorney General's uh, letter uh, with other AGs opposing the proposed rules. Your question is, uh, what's the next step if they go ahead and do final adoption of that? Then we have a conflict uh, with state law. We have a conflict uh, with the uh, values of Arkansas. And uh, we have a, 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 you know, a, a recipe for a disaster in women's sports. And so there'll be a confrontation then. And we will uh, have to look at ways to litigate that, uh, to challenge that in court, and hopefully be successful. In the meantime, though, uh, our school districts are in a uh, difficult position because they'll be threatened with the loss of federal funds. And our counsel to the school districts is let's just proceed as we're doing now, common sense, following the guidance that's uh, in place from the Department of Education. We're not adjusting our guidance to them uh, because we want to, we're opposing the proposed rules. We're hoping that we can be successful and that those rules will not come into effect. Uh, Governor, you said that you want every child to be free of discrimination in Arkansas, but you're telling us today that you're opposing a rule change that would add protections for transgender and, and gay kids. So can you kind of square that? How does your opposition to this rule change, you know, jive with your, your stated position to protect kids from discrimination? Well, I don't believe it is uh, discrimination if you're telling uh, a, a biological male who may one day wake up and identify as a female that they have to go to uh, a uh, bathroom that's based upon their uh, birth sex. I don't think that is discrimination. I think that is how you have to conduct things in the reasonable uh, affairs of life and the conduct of education. And so uh, we want our children to be safe. We want them to not be bullied. Uh, we want them to have the opportunities for education and access to sports, whether you're a male or a female. And we believe that this, we have, uh, we're on the right path now to accomplish that. And that uh, actually what uh, the Biden administration is proposing leads to discrimination against girls in sports. Supreme Court's ruling on Title VII. I think the, the majority opinion was authored by Neil Gorsuch. So I was wondering if you could explain how his opinion on Title VII differs from what the Department of Education is now saying what should be the case under Title IX. Again, Title VII is pertaining to employment law. And I handled a lot of Title VII cases when I was practicing law. And so the court made a very narrow decision applying that definition of sex discrimination for Title VII in employment cases, and they made it clear this was a narrow decision. And so there's no application broader than that. Despite that narrow decision, the Biden administration is trying to take that and apply that to Title IX and other areas. I think it's a, a misinterpretation of the Bostock decision. Uh, I think it was very clear that was a narrow decision. Uh, I'm going to ask Secretary Key, he's shaking his head no. Uh, no, they hopefully will give due regard to all the comments uh, that are being made in opposition. And uh, so we don't know the timeline, but uh, we hope that it will not be during the school year. All right, with that, uh, uh, we're available for additional questions as needed. Thank you very much.